Hello, this is Pastor Jim Panko with the Midweek Meditation for January 12th, 2022. I read for you Ephesians chapter 3, verses 20 and 21. Now, to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Is ignorance bliss? Sometimes it feels that way. I mean, think of the things that bombard us in the news every day. Everything from viruses uh, to inflation to uh, shortages to labor problems. And we see that little baby, right, asleep in his mother's arms. That baby doesn't listen to the news and wouldn't understand if, if he did. And that's why he sleeps peacefully. He has no idea of the problems that are around him. He has not a care in the world. Maybe ignorance really is bliss. Maybe that's what Jesus meant when he said, uh, I tell you the truth, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Is he saying, just keep it simple, stay ignorant, have a childlike faith and a childlike view of the world, live by the philosophy that everything you need to know you learned in kindergarten? No. Listen to the warning that Paul gave later in this same letter to the Ephesians about what happens if our faith stays immature and ignorant. He says, We will no longer be like infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of men in their deceitful scheming. It is true that there are some things that God calls us to accept on faith, just trusting his word with a childlike trust. But at the same time, God calls us to grow in faith, to go deeper into God's Word. You see, God doesn't want us to be ignorant or immature Christians. And the fact is that if we don't continue to grow and mature in our knowledge, in our faith, and in our life as Christians, we could put our salvation in grave danger. It's, it's like children. Children need to learn how to stand on their own, how to recognize dangers around them. They can't have constant supervision for the rest of their life. And so it is with us. As we go out into the world, we need to know and recognize the dangers that are all around us. But here's the thing. No matter how well informed we are about God's Word, in one sense, we will always remain ignorant. I've been, I studied for 12 years to become a pastor, and I've been a pastor for about 36 years now. And I still have to admit, I'm ignorant. I'm ignorant in the sense that I really don't understand all that God is doing, all that God can do for me and for you. Paul says that God is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine. And, and I want you to notice something about what Paul says there. He says it's what God can do for us, but also what God can do in us. In his letter to the Corinthians, Paul wrote this. He said, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. Think about that. We can't even conceive, we can't even imagine or, or think to ask the things that God is doing for us. We're ignorant of some. Most of what God is doing, we're clueless about. We don't know and understand God's plans. And we're completely lost when it comes to knowing all that God is able to do for us. 
But here's the thing. The more that we seek God's guidance in his word, and the more that we see, receive God's strength through his sacraments, and, and the more that we are encouraged and corrected by our fellow Christians, and, and the more that the Spirit works powerfully in us day by day, the more we find blissful peace and hope and comfort that leans on God's promises, power, and grace, even if we don't know or understand just how it is that God is going to take care of us, how it is that God is going to make things unfold. You see, the more we learn about God's ways, the more we realize how ignorant we really are about God's ways. And in that sense, ignorance is bliss. Because when we understand that we don't know and we can trust, then we can be like that little child that closes his eyes at night without fear, confident that mommy and daddy and Jesus are going to take care of him even though he has no idea what's involved in his care and protection. And in the same sense, we can live trusting in God's promises and God's ways, even if we don't know what it's going to take for God to carry out his plan for us. Let's pray. Oh God the Father, we thank you for sending your Son Jesus to us and for making known in him the mystery of your gracious will, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him has eternal life. We praise you for giving us your saving word through which the Holy Spirit has enlightened our understanding and sanctified our lives. Graciously help us to use our time wisely toward the upbuilding of our faith and, the, and upbuilding the faith in the hearts of others as well. Finally, Lord, as we have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so let us walk in him, rooted and built up in faith and abounding in all good works. We bring our prayers in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.